So a quick word on the audio upgrade bug and the importance of equipment pairings. A while back I wanted to dip into two channel audio and saw that Zero Fidelity recommended the IOTA VX SA3 integrated amp. It's this piece on the bottom here uh, with a pair of Triangle Bro 3s. I went that route and was not disappointed at all. I even did a review of the speakers versus a popular competitor from Klipsch. Um, after some time though, I wanted more resolution and decided to go up the line in Triangle's stable and went with the uh, Komate EZs. The increase in resolution was there, but I felt it could sound fuller and a bit more defined. So this led me to up also upgrade the amp uh, setup to include the PA3 here on top. Uh, also from my VX, it's a separate amp add-on that will increase the power output to 100 watts per channel. Pretty sweet. It did sound better and I really liked it, but I have a pretty open floor plan and I felt that bookshelf speakers weren't really cutting it for giving me that big room filling sound, at least in my case. So I'm selling the Cometes right now and I actually upgraded to these. Um, see right here, the 40th anniversary Antals, uh, also from Triangle, Triangle Audio. Uh, really well constructed speakers, they're made in France. And they sound spectacular. They're in my uh, to my ears. They're really well balanced. They're perfectly neutral. Uh, I, I really love the sound output from these, and they do fill up the room much better than um, than bookshelves. At least the bookshelves that I used. But now, guess what? <laughs> these monsters uh, have a ton of potential in terms of proper power delivery. So I started looking at some big boy amps to match the big boy speakers. So I read around and I liked. Uh, how the new Hegels are all rune ready. So I went with a used Hegel H190 right here. I asked the guy who was the original owner why he was selling it and he said he liked the sound so much he was going up the chain and actually getting the H590. That's two models up from this, which is a monster amp. Much more than I really needed right now, but it's good to know that he still liked the sound output from the H190. So here I am with my uh, 190, my Triangle Antals, and even uh, Venus 2 from Denifrips, which I'll make a review later. And long story short, the sound is very nice. It's very, very nice. It's smooth and controlled. Uh, when you compare the H190 to the IOTA VX stack, there is a definite difference. As much as I love the cost and ov overall value the IOTA provides, uh, the internals do matter. And it's very evident in the sound. I think British Audiophiles channel went into the detail on the internals here, but things like the caps, um, you know, they kind of, uh, they, they, I don't want to say cut corners, but they're definitely less expensive than what you can find in the H190. But the bottom line here is I can turn up the, the Hegel and it doesn't really break a sweat. Everything is absolutely well defined. It's super clean, it's controlled, powerful and dynamic. And these are all good traits that come with an excellent amp. But there are things that I'm going to miss with the IOTA VX and they're a lot of it, it's just usability features, but it did have tone controls, which I really appreciated. It, it allowed me to kind of uh, increase the treble one or two notches on the super neutral triangles here. Um, so I'll, I'll miss that, not by much. This The, the Hegel just doesn't have that option. Um, it also had a really handy option just for auto shut off. It sounds trivial, but if you're using this to power your television or your home theater, then it's really nice knowing that after what 20 minutes or 30 minutes it'll just auto shut off some days i'll come back and uh, a family member will forget to turn this off and then it's just been on for most of the day so that's kind of a bummer not a deal breaker i know this is meant for like two channel listening um and lastly i'll come over here but the remote the remotes so this is plastic this is metal this is heavy this is super light uh, which one do you think you prefer? I actually prefer this. Uh, it, it's mainly just a usability thing for me. It's it's nice just having something light to hold and to... The, the buttons are soft. For whatever reason, these buttons, they kind of poke you. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has ever explained that uh, or complained about that before. Um, and this has, you know, you can choose your selector in a nonlinear fashion. This one you have to like kind of cycle through until you hit the right input. So it's little nitpicks, um, but I overall, I don't care that much about r remotes and how heavy they are. I, I guess most people do, but I, I'm gonna miss this remote, funnily enough. So that's the skinny, but let's get to the drawbacks now um, with, with the current setup. 
uh, as with everything in the cruel audio world, nothing is perfect. Uh, you'll probably want to try something else, be curious on new equipment. And, and for me, despite spending, you know, close to $10,000 retail, that's the retail price. If you know a dealer, don't spend retail, try to negotiate that down. Despite all that, I still want more definition out of this setup. And, and as much as I love the Hegel, their house sound is known for being a bit on the smoother side. Uh, while this work would work out perfectly for a speaker that is on the bright side with an emphasis on the treble, the, um, the ones that I have here, the, the 40th anniversary, anniversary Antals, are so well balanced and neutral to my ears that I actually want some more of that upper frequency sparkle, it, especially when all of this is mated with an R2R DAC, which are also known for being a bit on the smoother side. Um, but again, I'll talk about that more in the future. Uh, and this is where I start to see where I can scratch that itch. I, I research online, I read around. I want something that's very neutral, very clean and powerful, yet a bit more revealing on the top end. And right now, from what I've been reading, I've been looking at the Kinky EX M1 Plus. That may be a good side grade for me. Um, side, because I say it's actually less expensive than this. I think this is what, this increased in price to around $4,300 USD. The Kinky is just under 2000 or I gotta look at that again. Maybe it's just under three thousand. But but yeah, I said side grade. Some may call it a downgrade because if you're coming from a Hegel, uh, there's no internal DAC in the Kinky. The company is not nearly as reputable as the other bigger players in the space, and it's definitely not rune ready as well. So there's that. Um, but the reviews online are all saying it has really clean power, great definition on the high end, and it's also more powerful. Uh, it, it comes in at 250 watt, sorry, 215 watts per channel versus the Hegel H190 here, which is rated at 150. Not sure how much or how little the, the difference in power output will result in the sound coming out of the triangles, but that will, be, that will remain to be seen. Curious how that'll play out. Um, so oh yeah, overall that's the update. Nothing huge, but thought it was worth sharing this journey because I know a lot of people have this uh, brand, IOTA VX, and, and probably are thinking about upgrading. And there's just a lot of popular brands here at different price points, so maybe this can help you. Um, and to be honest, I mainly wanted to post this because I now have to sell the IOTA stack to make room for this uh, 4K player from Panasonic. It comes highly recommended, the 8, UB820. You can also get the UB9000, which is dead quiet and has a great internal DAC. I think it's ESS based but there were so many black friday sales over the weekend for discs that i'm starting to grow a, a nice collection here this is my starter collection um but I, yeah i can't believe i'm going back to disc over streaming uh but one thing i did read was uh well, well first of all i got a semi nice tv the lg uh, lg c2 and i wanted to get the most out of it and I've heard the average bit rate for streaming movies is around 15 to 18 megabits per second. Uh, while a, f a 4K physical disc like these, uh, they could be up to 100 megabits per second. So 15 to 100, that's quite a difference in compression quality for both uh, audio and also the video. So curious how much better I'll like that. Um, and that's all. Stay tuned again where I compare all the Denifrip stacks against each other. Also compared to a Cord Cutis, and that'll be interesting. So that's it for today. Thanks, everyone. So long.